A lot of patients that come in the office, um, they have shoulder pain, and it generally is the type of pain that will keep them from doing something they enjoy. So that's, that's why they show up in the office. They either can't play tennis, um, or that they have pain that wakes them up at night, they can't lift their grandchildren, you know, something along the lines of, of interfering with activities. The rotator cuff are the muscles that come over the top of the shoulder, uh, that is this area here, and then they attach to the ball part of the arm, uh, and here's the socket part here. And what can happen is, is the tendon that attaches to the, to the humerus can pull off and you get a resultant tear. So if we're looking at a shoulder, here's the, the, the humerus that we saw and the rotator cuff muscles actually attach all around the humerus. So you've got four muscles. You've got one on top, two in the back, and one in the front. And they'll attach and they'll help you lift your arm. That's what the rotator cuff does. Um, with an injury or sometimes just over time, the rotator cuff muscle can pull off the bone and it's, it's like a rubber band on stretch. If you um, uh, if you tear, the, the, the tendon will pull off and retract back and it won't, you won't have the ability, the body doesn't have the ability to put the, put the tendon back where it needs to go, so you have to go in and surgically reattach that. Rotator cuff surgery uh, is a common procedure and what you're trying to accomplish is to fix a torn muscle in the shoulder joint, reattach it back to the bone so that it can heal and return a patient's function and get rid of uh, pain. There are two different ways to repair a rotator cuff. There's an open procedure, and what we mean by that, when, when you go see your doctor and he says, I'm gonna do an open rotator cuff repair, what that generally indicates is that he's gonna make a, a cut on the skin, spread the muscle apart, and go in and visualize the rotator cuff and fix it back to the bone through an open incision. An, a second way to do the, do the procedure is to do an arthroscopic procedure where you go in and make tiny little poke holes and you use the video camera through these long tubes called cannulas uh, to assist in looking at the rotator cuff and then we have specific instruments to uh, arthroscopically repair or sew that rotator, that torn rotator cuff back down to the bone. The advantages to an arthroscopic procedure are that it's smaller incisions, it's less dissection through the muscle, it tends to hurt a little bit less, it does not change the healing time. So if it takes six weeks for a rotator cuff tear to heal properly, it's going to take six weeks whether you do it arthroscopic or six weeks whether you do it open. When a patient comes into your office, you want to make sure you listen to what they're trying to tell you. Um, different patients have different needs, and the needs of a 50-year-old uh, who is trying to get back to work versus the needs of an 18-year-old who's trying to get back on the baseball field versus the needs of a 30-year-old who wants to get back on the tennis court are all different. So you can't just put everybody into a um, a particular treatment protocol and what I try to do is, is vary, vary the treatment I'm going to offer a patient based on what their goals and expectations are and also what their particular problem is. Not all rotator cuff tears are created equal. So you want to put it in context with the patient, you want to listen to their problem, you want to listen to their goals and you want to help, help them reach that.